So you might be forgiven if you have a look at the, uh, the route today that you think I've gone mad. It's just one big squiggle. Um, I was looking for a site today because it's been so much rain over the last week that uh, try and find somewhere that's not flooded. But when I saw this place, which is uh, only sort of 20 miles from home, which is great, uh, it's all on runways uh, and bits in the forest. So I'm sure there'll be a bit of mud here and there, but uh, in the main, we can uh, explore and see, uh, see something that's quite dry today. Right, first things first, when you park here, it's not really the most salubrious of parking. Um, leave your car at your own risk, which is a bit, uh, bit of a shame, really. Uh, let's go and take a look at the information board. It's right out in the middle of the uh, quagmire. Hopefully the old waterproof socks will come in handy again. What I will do is uh, put a link up above to a video that I saw last night. Somebody was uh, talking about the history of the site, so I won't go into all that myself. Um, just again, watch these videos, they're quite inspirational, aren't they? There's uh, quite a lot to learn about World War II and the D-Day landings, another place where uh, you know, people took off from and uh, went to do the job. Um, so the squiggle might change. This is what I'm planning. And uh, hopefully we get to see a few things because there are uh, buildings still existing and certainly parts of the runway. So who knows? We're just sitting, well, we've just come up that road there and we're now hitting this concrete perimeter road so we're going off to the right like I say there's a bit of water on it but and at the side left and right in the woods it's just completely and utterly flooded so we'll be uh, <clears throat> we'll have plenty to see yeah I'm glad I did a bit of planning actually because when you look at it it looks like a standard airfield with the cross runways um, and lots of footpaths crisscrossing around it. But I suppose if I didn't look, I'd be missing out because I'm not quite sure which road to take now if I was just taking my dog for the walk. I suppose if you come four or five times, you explore a different bit each time. So I, uh, I've worked out a route trying to take in as much as, it, uh, as I can. Um, a little bit on the runway later. Um, but really going around the edges and having a look to see if I can find any of the buildings that made up uh, RAF North Witham. And this place was shut about December 1945, so it, uh, I know that's when the Americans handed it back anyway. Morning. It is mate, yeah, perfect day. So here we are. <clears throat> There's the runway. All made of square blocks, which you can see from the air really easily. But it's still quite serviceable. I thought, uh, looking at the uh, drone shots that I saw the other day, that uh, you know it looked like it was uh, dug up and. A lot of stuff dumped on it but we'll stick to the perimeter for now and then we'll hit the runway a little bit later one of the runways anyway nice straight walks on concrete don't get this very often seeing over to the left next to the runway it's all willow that's been allowed to come up and uh, obviously the forestry commission look after this place today so They've allowed the trees to grow, I suppose 75 years of growth now there is, since it was shut and turned back into a 
country park that everybody can enjoy. Twyford Butterfly Sanctuary. So you can take a little detour down there. See, there must have been buildings at the bottom of these ones. I couldn't see anything from the air on these. And it kind of leads over to where the services are on the A1. But uh, I'm going to stick to this area. I know there looks like the air traffic control building or one of the RAF buildings is still do, you know, available at the bottom. It's actually quite a tranquil place. And when you start to think about it, how quiet it is, you then realise that you uh, have the noisy A1, probably less than a quarter of a mile away. And you can hear that traffic on a Sunday morning, but it's still quite nice. I've only seen a handful of people here and I think on a busy day you'd really struggle to park because there looks like there's a you know 10 car parking if there's a if everybody behaves themselves but uh, the gate was open I did try and drive down and then ask somebody and he says oh I'm surprised the gate's open it's just that little car park at the end but no charge looks like we're having a free one for a change Everywhere you go now, they seem to think that uh, six or seven pounds for a few hours is acceptable, which, you know, I know walking is probably the only free pastime there is left in the world now, but uh, certainly you've got to park to get there and, uh, you know, pay in the tea shop when you get back. Very, very misty out here. There's a footpath from there that goes through the wood, which is what we're going to take. Yes, this is the sort of place where we might struggle. I think we might go around here. Where there's a will, there's possibly a way. There you go, we're around that bit. We'll be back out on the runway shortly. Looks like the bottom part of Perimeter Road has been used up by the farm that's at the end, so that's probably why they've had to put this footpath in over the years. There you go, back onto a reasonable. Here we are, we're just coming through to the runway again. It's not the longest runway in the world. I wouldn't have even thought it was a mile, to be honest. I'm going to measure it on screen, but uh, these sort of runways were built for the Lancasters and heavily laden planes of that nature. So we're right down that end just 10 15 minutes ago and now we're up here so this is the intersection of the two runways This is probably the main runway actually because it is wide. That is seriously wide. Where these ones seem to be narrower. I should think all of the trees that were in the middle there have obviously grown up through the concrete. But this does seem a lot wider. So there's a footpath heading off out there that takes you off site. It's all been nicely uh, gravelled which is nice. We're heading down here. There's a building down here on the uh, satellite image. Whether it's the air traffic control building, I don't know. We'll, we'll hopefully see. So here we are. Just turning off the runway. 
50 meters or so. See our first building. Even down here there's a bit of mud but it's livable. You can feel the sort of concrete underneath it so it's not, not too bad. Right, there she is. Obviously a kind of veranda out the front. Whether there was a glass structure on the top so that they could see the planes or whether that was it, I don't know. I'm sure there's photographs on the internet somewhere about these things. We're almost into the industrial estate over the back here. But there's the old building. All bricked up to stop people from getting in. I've seen photos of people in there and people always find a way to go and explore, don't they? Interesting. Yeah, it's hard to imagine what it was like because obviously in those days there was no trees. I suppose from that balcony you could see the whole airfield all the way back to where our cars are parked. Now it's only 75 years of nature re reclaiming itself that uh, has changed it. Nice that we can come and see it though. I'm just walking down the runway and uh, I just find it interesting that there are bits where nature has just got through that concrete or it's it's a tree that's sitting in a crack in the concrete or maybe it's sitting on the top, who knows but I suppose over time You know, you'll have a Sherwood Forest type place here, another hundred years. I met a couple of people at the sea entrance bringing their dogs and when I got up to the main runway I met a guy that said good morning, but apart from that I've had the place to myself. And now a good half a mile away from the A1, that drone is disappearing. I would imagine by the time I get to the other end of the park it will be the most tranquil place ever. Right, so we're coming to the end of that runway and we're at the intersection of the, or the triangulation of the other runway. I'm gonna head down this way, see if I can see any buildings at all, but that one only goes down about another, I don't know, 500 yards, 50 meters or something, not too far. But yeah, not the longest runways in the world just goes to show how aircraft have come on really. I know down at Greenham they had the longest runway in Europe when that was running, that was about four miles long. And then they dug it up, dug all this concrete up and used it for the, I think it was the A3 bypass. So that uh, country park like that is, it's going to reclaim itself a whole lot quicker. Because that was still operational till about the 80s I think. Just up on the perimeter now, right at the very top. Back out again. Going down kind of the right hand side of the airport, if you like. <clears throat> very quiet up here. I thought it was odd I hadn't seen a runner. Somebody was running down here in the trainer, so obviously they don't feel it's a, a trail shoe type run. We've got a few people down here with dogs. So, uh, obviously heading back towards civilization, I suppose. Right, you can see this on the sat nav, where the screen will show up. Little turn off here. I'm going to go round a circle and come back down this way in a moment. Now, I saw this bit on the uh, satellite image, it's like a 
a strange little loop that goes around whether there was administration buildings over here or not I don't know can't see anything from the air obviously a lot of stuff's been removed since the base was closed but again it's all on concrete you know you're not uh, not getting soaking wet now, the views are pretty much the same but there's a sense of exploration isn't there just seeing things that you that you might see around the corner just uh, sucking up a bit of history trying to imagine what it was like you know that's what I like about this walk and I think these videos aren't about showing you what it's like it's just sort of saying come out here give it a go you know if you can see that it's accessible to you or you know, on this type of walk, you certainly bring your kids. And your kids could run merry, merry all day long up here. Yeah, there's clearly something here. Whether it was gardens or buildings, I don't know. It does feel like you're uh, going around an avenue where there would have been things in, inside the... But when you look over there the trees change so I just wonder if this was like gardens to the to the base or whatever because the trees are a bit more ornamental I don't know if there's a way in I'll have a look in a moment there's one good thing about having a Garmin I can do this <laughs> head off the res let's go and take a Let's see if it's not too muddy, just see if there's anything over here. Quite a lot of water and brambles. The thing about satellite shots, when you you look at satellite shots and there's trees, of course you don't know what's underneath them. And there's a canopy. It's perfect camouflage, isn't it? But you notice how the trees have changed. See any evidence of anything else? That's my uh, Garmin telling me I'm off course. I think I can find my way back. Amazing, I'll turn around and uh, you can understand why people get lost in places like this because I've just not, I've not took a bearing or anything, but. Uh, you know, whichever direction you go, you're going to hit that tarmac because it's a circular path, but easy to get lost, isn't it? Yeah, you can just see the tarmac over there. I wish there was more to show you, but there isn't really. Just got some nice trees and walks. This bit's interesting. It's all been banked up over the years. Whether that's when they've been doing works. You see there's a path in here as well. Just going to have a quick look. It's interesting that there's a roadway into it. Oop, a bit slippy. And there's a suspicious mound in the middle. I don't know whether the bunkers that have been, you know, filled in over the years. Or, but it looks like there's a path that goes right round it. How odd. Yeah, more concrete over here. Go right around it. I'd hate to see a video on the internet later on that <laughs> shows you that there was a door or something and I've missed it. It's uh, one of those things. Yeah, this is certainly all made of concrete. And earth on the top. 
So yeah. Yeah, there's another concrete slab over there, look. So whether that's uh, mizzen huts or who knows. So I'll just come onto this apron off that road. And now this is where I do need the uh, Garmin because I've plotted a route which takes us through into a clearing. I'm not sure there's much in the clearing. It's just odd that there's no, no trees there. So I'm going to do that and head back over to the the main runway. But as you can see, it's not going to be easy going. This is where the Garmin comes in very handy to get me to the clearing, first of all. <laughs> that is, of course, if it's possible. There's a nice river here. Uh, Go on, let's give it a go. Bit of adventure. Right, so I'm going to take a look at that on the map when I get back. I looked at the satellite views and uh, the Garmin views. And the, first of all, the Garmin, the OS map views, show it as a decent footpath, which maybe in the summer it is. You could probably see a defined path. But uh, I certainly couldn't find it. Unless I just missed the, the entrance to it completely. So I headed off and then decided to come back. I got about 100 yards in. It was very, uh, very boggy, uh, brambly, very unpleasant. So now I'm just taking this road back to the car park. I was only going to see a bit more of the uh, runway on the other side. So there wasn't a lot more to see. And here we are back. Quite a few more cars. Like I say, always worth getting here early.